show examples of a typical warm-up for our academy players who train weekly across Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Essex and London. The warm-up will begin with the players stretching and moving within a small coned area. Everything that we will do incorporates a football, so each player will have their own football and will dribble around as they do their stretches. Dribbling. Right, ball stop off on the jog. Go through any stretches, so movements. If you need to do any static ones, you can as well. And ball's back, start dribbling. Quicker, quicker, sharper. And ball stop, off on the jog. And start dribbling, go. The next part of the warm-up we will move on to ball manipulation. This is a chance for us to teach the players lots of different skills, movements, cuts, feints, turns and things that they can use to beat players within games. As well as this we can encourage the players to be creative and show any skills that they may have seen on TV or learnt themselves. Listen to my instructions. Toe taps, go! As quick as we can, toe taps, quicker, quicker, come on, push it, push it and dribbling, go! And inside to inside, go. Nice and quick, nice and quick. As quick as we can. As many as we can. And dribbling. When I shout turn, you're going to change direction with a different skill. Turn. Sharper. Turn. Turn. Toe taps, go. Nice and quick, nice and quick, nice and quick. Quicker, quicker. And moving, go. Keep going, keep going. Go. Toe taps on the spot, go. And dribbling, go. And penguins, go. And dribbling. Turn. Sharper, turn. Toe taps, go. Dribbling, go. Double step over, change direction. Excellent, well done. Double step over, change direction. Turn. Double step over. Excellent, well done. Keep moving. The next part of the session, we'll move on to a rondo. This is something which is very important and something that we incorporate in every single session we do, as well as on match days. This is something that we can get the players into a habit of setting up themselves if they arrive at the session earlier, rather than just kicking balls around and being silly. During this rondo, I like to keep it very structured and small numbers. So, for example, here I have four players on the outside with two defenders trying to win the ball back. Right, let's go. That's you, Josh, and your person to your left, Aaron in as well. Larry, go onto your own line. You're always on your own line. Owen, let's go. Play, come on. Do it properly, please. Do it again. Do it again. Let's go. Go. Eli, go. Keep it on the floor. Keep it on the floor. Well played. Well played. Keep moving the ball. Keep moving the ball. Quicker. Quicker. Split them if we can. Right, Eli and the person to your left, that's Larry. Aaron and Josh fill the empty lines, let's go. Play. That's you and Josh. Oh no, sorry, that's you and Tom. Go, play. My setup for the rondo is four cones set up in a box. They're around 10 to 12 yards apart with each player standing in between two cones. So therefore the player has two cones to represent a line that they would stand on. I feel it's important to keep it structured. If you haven't got cones and you let the players make their own box, they tend to go really, really big and step out and then it becomes dribbling. Whereas if you can see, I want the players to just take one touch and move the ball rather than trying to beat a player. The idea is to work on pass and touch, not dribbling and trying to beat players. It is very important that you ensure that the intensity in this rondo is very high. What I like to see is as soon as the ball is lost, they work really hard to get the rondo going again. For example, on this one, there's two defenders in the middle. However, whoever makes the mistake goes into the middle as well as the person directly to their left. This should happen straight away and the ball should start moving as quick as possible.
If I freeze the play here, you can see that the number seven who's about to receive the ball has a great opportunity to turn out and play the ball away from the defenders into a free man on his right. However, without looking, he tries to play the ball straight back into where it's come from and loses it. This is a great opportunity for us to be able to step in and explain to the player that he needs to open up his vision and look to play away from the defenders into a new space and not straight back to where the ball has come from. During the next part of Rondo, I changed the setup so that the players are standing on one of the cones on the outside. The two defenders in the middle stay defending. What happens is, if the ball is given away or someone makes a mistake, everyone has to sprint as quick as they can to get to a new cone, including the two people in the middle. Whoever doesn't get to a cone becomes the defenders. This creates higher intensity and also works on their reactions and decision making once they've lost the ball. Yeah, yeah. Find a cone, find a cone! No, Aaron was there. Yeah, everyone finds a cone. Come on, get a new ball. If you're standing still, you've got to get a new ball and play. Find a new cone. No, Aaron, find a new one. Right, play straight away. Josh, play, play, play. Don't panic, don't panic. That pass needs to be better. You still got it? Excellent. Find a new cone. Last one, play. Straight away, Tom, play. Find a new cone, find a new cone. Well done. Just reset and keep it going. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, also subscribe so you can be one of the first people to watch any of our new content and click watch more to see some of our recent videos.